Hi, uh, second uh, second uh, vlog from uh, Sejong City, South Korea. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, so last time I did this was a Saturday. Seven days later, I'm doing another one. So um, uh, yeah, it's been uh, been an interesting week. Um, a bit more set. I feel a little bit more settled now, though. Um, uh, so yeah, since then, uh, what, is, what have I done? So Saturday, uh, Saturday I did a little bit of shopping. Um, got myself a lovely new uh, bed, blue bed cover. Um, yeah, yeah. So a lot up sleeping a lot better now. Uh, then got myself some j uh, polo shirts as well for work because the whole um, blue V-neck jumper and white button T-shirt was just making me sweat like crazy. So um, it's going a bit better. Um, uh, still waiting on the old bank accounts and um, oh, excuse me and the old. Um, uh, phone thing. I'm gonna have to look into that at some point because uh, my 30 day sim runs out in like a couple of weeks or something. So uh, yeah. Uh, so, so I've had uh, one whole week of teaching: Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, teaching. Uh, so um, oh, excuse me. Been uh, been quite a week. Uh, so I'll try to explain how this works. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, the students have um, uh, st groups of students have two lessons a day, one with their bilingual teacher, one with their native teacher. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, so yeah, I, I teach six groups, so I teach uh, six lessons uh, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's usually from about um, two forty to seven o five. They're 40, 40 minute lessons with five minute break breaks in between. Uh, yeah, um, uh, and it's very much uh, the school's set program. Um, uh, you have to cram a lot into a lesson. Um, I don't know. I would I would prefer to have a little. I would prefer to have less crammed in there so I can have more time to focus on um, on students' individual errors because uh, I'm I am noticing some errors that I would like to bring up a bit more to sort of review what they're doing, uh, what they can improve on. But uh, but again, that's kind of what homework feedback's for, but I'd rather actually say it in person, but hey, never mind. Also, there's a whole way of reading. I prefer to do this, the uh, uh, CELTA way of reading, where I, or where I can um, uh, do a listen for gist activity, listen for detail, then express your own opinions. Uh, but they do their reading a certain way, and that's how I have to do things. I uh, maybe one day I might uh, write my own program, but uh, not uh, not today. So, yeah. Uh, but 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 yeah. Um, yeah, students are good fun. They're they're a, they're, they're a good laugh. The students uh, liking them a lot. A few naughty ones here and there, but not too many. Uh, so it's sort of. Um, uh, so, so, so yeah, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday sort of. So you got day one a bit of written work. Day two a bit bit more. Uh, uh, a bit more what well, reading writing speak uh reading writing speaking and some uh, some projects as well uh day three you get to actually film their project which is either musical or news uh, cast or presentation or something so um uh yeah it, it must be quite fun to be a student uh, in, in this uh, in this program uh yeah uh so yeah pretty pretty full on days monday wednesday friday uh and yeah, there's plenty of admin in between. So you get in at uh, eleven, do start off with your admin, and then get, take a bit of time for lunch around one o'clock. And two forty is when uh, first class uh, starts. If there's any ever at any time uh, before a lesson starts, I like to uh, play a little Mr. Bean for them. You know, just to get them started. You know, just get get them, get them warmed up. You know, like ooh, what uh, dialogue could you put in a Mr. Bean um, thing? So and they're, and they're absolutely. Some of them have never heard of Mr. Bean. They're loving it so far. They're just they're just laughing their heads off. It's really going down a hit with the older students, actually, Mr. Bean. So yeah, um, so that and then there's Tuesday and Thursday. That now Tuesday and Thursday are dedicated to the three day, the the, the two day programs, which consist of three lessons. 
Uh, so either two with bi bilingual teacher, one with native, or two with native, one with bilingual. Uh, Tuesdays, I only have about four lessons. Um, so I've got uh, two free periods. And Tuesday, uh, Thursdays, I have one free period, so five lessons. So... Um, uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's been good for uh, that's been an interesting. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, and and yeah, uh, this Tuesday, what happened was um, I actually had to go and get uh, I think some my like identity like uh, verified or something, something, something to do with passports and visas and all that, and all that rubbish, you know, and identification, all that. So. So, so just work paperwork stuff like that. So one of the guys from school drove me to um, uh, Daejeon, not to confuse with Dijon. Uh, Daejeon is this big city near Sejong. So um, uh, the car ride was great. I got to see a bit more of the Asia I know. So so you're looking at second or third story buildings with uh, with uh, open markets downstairs, narrow streets. Um, uh, all that stuff, really, the sort of stuff you see in uh, the back streets of Hanoi quite a bit. That's the uh, it, it looks a lot more like the Asia that I knew. Sejong is a new city, so it's sort of like uh, skyscrapers and square roads, kind of like kind of like our equivalent of Milton Keynes, perhaps. I've never actually been to Milton Keynes, but I've seen a map of it, and it's uh, very square, um, which uh, some people don't like. But I wouldn't mind seeing Milton Keynes just to, just to see what it looks like, you know. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's um, uh, so yeah, that was that was great, and I got got to see this football stadium. Uh, I think Daejeon, they've actually been relegated to the second division. So, but uh, to a couple of the teachers uh, go go there quite a bit for the for the footy. Uh, I might I'll probably go sometime in the future, uh, but I'm not doing too much of my spare time at the moment. It's just sort of laying low for a bit while I'm settling in, you know, just sort of waiting for the bank account and all that uh, to happen next. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been good. I've, uh, I've moved away from the fast food quite a bit and um, moved on to healthier food from the um, from, from the Gold Mart, uh, sort of um, doing a lot of uh, steaming, it's like, like steaming, so when I say steaming, I mean a uh, pot of, uh, pot of like, like little bit of little bit of water in a pan, boil, uh, put some either vegetable, put some vegetables in a sieve. Just have the steam um, cook them the way you're supposed to cook vegetables. That's that's how you're supposed to cook them. You're not supposed to boil them or put them in the oven or anything. No, you're not supposed to do it like that. That steaming is the, honestly the best way. Uh, yeah, so a little bit of a uh, little bit of sausage meat for, uh, for for breakfast with some steamed leeks or steamed pak choy. Lovely, uh, and a little canned um, canned coffee as well. Uh, so that's been brilliant for breakfast. Lunch is really good. I get to go to the shop called Paris Baguette, a uh, big, big, uh, um, a big chain out in Asia. Uh, I get get my little uh, get my little uh, espresso espresso Hana you say oh that's what you say if you want one espresso, um, and usually a nice little uh, sandwich or or a, or a roll. And you know what else they're big on over here? They're big on like. Um, like hot dog meat in in in, in bread, uh, they they absolutely love it over here. Um, they love it. They love it in Starbucks as well. You just can't get that at home in the UK. You just, it's just nothing like that. Uh, sandwiches are, are cool. Uh, I like a thing here, but we know we know the UK is obsessed with sandwiches and uh, tortilla wrap uh, things. Over here, it's either sandwich or. Or your hot dog in pastry with all sorts of uh, vegetables and stuff. So yeah, that's uh, that's uh, yeah, that's it's usually a couple of those for um, for lunch. So like one hot dog thing, one vegetable roll sort of thing, like a like a vegetable pocket uh, sort of thing. Uh, well, I had a had a really interesting curry one yesterday. Um, picked up the wrong one, but it was it was really nice all the same. Uh, yeah, and dinner. Now dinner's quite interesting. Um, uh, dinner. I'll just show you what dinner is. It's usually chicken dumplings and uh, noodles. So allow me to go find some. So here's here's one. Whoa, whoa, careful! I'm nearly dropping my uh, ramen everywhere. And um, oh, oh no, 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 wrong one. Here we are. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, careful. Okay, so 
dinner is usually the best part of the day for me. It's usually these lovely uh, four of these steamed or six little ones. Uh, these are the bigger, bigger brand from, ironically, a, a no brand. They are actually a brand out here in South Korea. <laughs> it's a bit of a running joke we have. And um, and yes, yeah, some uh, and usually some ramen with that. Um, uh, there's a really spicy sesame ramen, which is decent. These these are these are all right. Um, uh, I, I'll have to keep going through all of these to see which ones I like the most. Uh, yeah, but that's uh, that's uh, you should my favourite part of the day: steamed dumplings with um, uh, boiled ramen. Love it. Let's just put that back. There we go. And at some point, I will. I will show off a one of the one of the interesting uh, brioche buns they have over here because I just can't help myself. I want um, at least one uh, one of these uh, brioche cream buns every day. They're like like brioche rolls, but filled with either custard or or cream or red bean paste or um, like this green tea or pistachio sort of paste. Uh, they are amazing. I uh, love those. Um, one of my co-teachers uh, well, was not a co-teacher. One of my, uh, I think the, I think the head, um, uh, the, the what's it, the the, the head native teacher, Saf. He uh, <laughs> he hilariously um, uh, tried one of those cream buns. He thought uh, uh, like with red red paste. He thought it was chocolate. But it looks like chocolate. It tastes a little bit like chocolate, but it's not chocolate. It's red bean paste, and he didn't even know that. Uh, uh, he couldn't tell the difference, which I thought was quite funny. Um, yeah, but I have at least one of those a day uh, in the evening. I just can't help myself. I love them so much. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna say it. I've only had the, I've only had the just the, the basic, basic. Korean food from like at the supermarket and I can already tell you it's better than British food easily so so much better um I just wish uh I was back home in the UK um did the did, did, did food like uh, South Korea does yeah and um I'll tell you what else I absolutely love I love this tea that they have over here this iced tea sort of stuff um it was chilled tea uh, I can't really describe how this stuff tastes. It's, um, it's, I'll just try a little bit now, actually. Hang on. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's got an interesting, it's, it's slightly sweet, but not quite. It's, it's, uh, it's got a really interesting taste. It's sort of like honey tea. It's sort of like, it's like a combination of honey and maybe Earl Grey, perhaps. It's, uh, I'll just try a little bit now, see if I can identify. Mm. Yeah, there's definitely a honey taste. Yeah, I think that's the best way to describe this stuff. It's like honey and Earl Grey combined. And it just tastes amazing. And it's apparently really healthy as well. It's like really good for you. So, um, yeah, but I absolutely love this stuff. It's, it's still, it's not like sparkling or anything. So, uh, uh, yeah, um... Yeah, uh, I think I've got like a three for two offer on that. That so it's amazing. Uh, I also like the uh, canned co canned chilled coffee in the morning. Love that as well. So uh, yeah, food is incredible here. Absolutely loving the food. Uh, finally, I might as well just talk about what I do with my uh, evenings. Um, it's usually um, a bit of Disney Plus. Uh, let's see, I watched through the. Uh, I think I said last time, watched through all of the. Um, uh, Disney Star Wars live action films. Um, when the time comes, I'll move on to the um, uh, TV stuff. Um, last thing I watched, um, I did go on to watch the uh, Clone Wars film from 2008, the animated, um, oh, excuse me, Clone Wars film on uh, on uh, Disney Plus. Uh, oh, excuse me, watch that. Um, uh, yeah, that was from 2008. Um, Decent film, actually. Um, I will just say that it had no place being in the cinema. Um, the like the voice the acting's good, but the character movements are a little bit off, and there's not really much detail in the uh, animation. It, we're, we're not. We're not. I mean, Madagascar. The Madagascar film is uh, has more um, more detailed ca uh, detailed draw drawn characters than uh, as Clone Wars films do do does, and. It's a very basic story, really. It's just um, 
it's just uh, uh, Anakin and Obi Wan trying to get the um, tr- uh, trying to re- uh, trying to save um, Jabba the Hutt's captured little son called Stinky, which is pretty funny. Um, that's just a nickname, but uh, yeah, they just try to get they're just trying to get him back to Jabba the Hutt's while the uh, Sith uh, Dooku is. Um, is convincing Jabba that the Jedi have evil intentions and and that they, they sort of have to, well, not quite prove their innocence, but um, yeah, I just have to get uh, get Stinky back to Jabba um, uh, unhurt. But I will say, I did like the film. I liked it. I even liked it a bit more than episodes two and three of Star Wars, the live action films, the the bigger budget films. I like the I like the Clone Wars film a little bit more. So maybe because it's just some, some very very simple, you know. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Simple story. That's um, that's something that the and that's something I think the Disney um, live action films did well. They kept the story. They did keep the story relatively simple, but even then they did. That that's my biggest complaint about the um, Disney's live action Star Wars films. Uh, uh, Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker. They did a lot of copying. Um, Last Jedi did it a bit more, bit, bit, bit more respectful. They didn't like wink at the audience as much. They did just, um, uh, they did just say, "Remember that scene from Empire Strikes Back? Well, here's, uh, here's our version of it, but with, uh, with a more unique spin." It's like that was a little bit more respectful. I thought, I thought that uh, Ryan Johnson was a bit more respectful to the. Uh, uh, original films with J.J. Abrams, uh, who did Rise of Skywalker and um, Force Awakens, was just sort of, uh, hey, remember this? Remember this from the? Uh, remember this? What you loved? Well, we're doing it now. We're doing it now. Remember this? Hey, 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 did that. So, but I, I do like those films. Um, uh, yeah, I do. I do really like them. I like them a lot more than the prequels. And uh, I think I said in the last one, Last Jedi, is still my favourite Star Wars film ever. Uh, that was the one film I thought that really just, um, just, uh, just. just just took it, just just expanded on Star Wars, expanded on the Force, expanded on the idea of characters. Um, uh, maybe not being completely good, not being completely evil. I just, I just believed in it a lot more. So um, yeah, I liked. Uh, so yeah, Last Jedi is still my favourite Star Wars film. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, so after Clone Wars, I watched, um, watched after watching Clone Wars TV series. Watched the first episode. It was Yoda. Uh, I think Yoda's on some diplomatic mission or something, and um, uh, and he comes in contact with uh, this uh, Sith character who was in the Clone Wars films. I can't remember her name, but um, yeah, they had an interesting standoff there. So yeah, watch that. That was good fun. Still watching mostly Simpsons on Disney Plus. Disney Plus is going to keep me going for the entire year, no doubt about that. Uh, yeah, and um, and yeah, so I think that's almost everything. Any other thing I'll just say is I've been looking into the future a little bit more as well. Uh, for when I go back to the UK, uh, I don't know whether when that's going to be. I mean, I took a, I, I spent a lot of effort getting all the paperwork to to come out here to South Korea, so I'm not sure I wanted to go through all that effort just to stay for the one uh, one year. It might make it two or three years uh, enough time to save up some money. Uh, uh, but yeah, but in terms of the future of uh, in the UK, um, right now in the UK, lifestyle is a bit difficult. Um, uh, costs are sort of escalating, so I'm not going to have any chance. I'm what chance am I going to have of actually uh, getting on the housing market at, at this current time? No, no chance whatsoever. So save up for money here, probably. But I'm looking into job opportunities back home, and a lot of people do say that Bournemouth is a good place for language schools. But I've heard that uh, there's four. I've read that there's four places in the UK that are good for language schools: um, London, Brighton. Oxford and Cambridge and I've been looking into um, renting prices out there and jobs out there for, for, for the distant future so yeah and, um, I think I'd be happier in somewhere like uh, Cambridge, Oxford, Brighton happier than in London I like London fine and I, I, I do miss London but at the same time I, I, I like a I like a reasonable sized city with um, my kind of city is sort of the uh, sort of old-fashioned arch- architecture combined with a uh, very, very mannish, laddish uh, sort of culture, like um, like you got your uh, like like your Green King IPA on historic uh, in a, in an historic uh, building, but showing lots of football sc- football television screens everywhere. Uh, sort of like what Salisbury's like, you know. That that's my kind of city, you know. The com- the com- combination of interesting architecture combined with the laddish, uh, uh, very 
very mannish um, uh, sort of um, uh, sort of stuff really you know the uh, the football and all that and um, yeah so Salisbury is my perfect city that's but uh, somewhere but yeah I'd, I'd imagine I'd quite like Oxford Oxford Cambridge Brighton maybe um, my sister went to university there uh, another one of my friends from school Terry lived there for a bit um, uh, yeah I liked Brighton okay um, yeah but um, uh, yeah so um yeah, maybe, I don't know, I think I prefer Oxford or Cambridge probably, so that's uh, sort of what my possible future could be. So I'll do another one of these as soon as I can, maybe next uh, next Saturday, so thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you on the, in, the, in the next one. Goodbye.